Hello everyone, this is instructor Muriel Howard. Today we will be breaking down coding cases for BC 3030 week one, yet again. This week we will be covering the musculoskeletal system, which is in chapter eight of the next step. But first we're gonna go over the tasks for the week. You need to review all materials sent out by me first, like getting organized, your welcome address video, musculoskeletal coding guidelines. This should take approximately two days. Complete your week one assignment while reviewing the general, the next step lecture and chapter eight. Please assure this is submitted on time. Your week one discussion, one post and two replies to either myself or your classmates. Review your study guide as well. Watch this video and complete your week one coding exam as I walk you through how to break down the coding, ca co coding case process, excuse me. Here are the tools that you will need. Your CPT manual, your ICD-10 manual, and copy of the week one coding exam. And of course, you need to set aside some time to be able to go through your questions thoroughly. Here's a copy of what your, what your week one test looks like in Microsoft Word. The first thing you will need to do is at the very top, enable editing. Next, you'll have a list of the scenario, some instructions, as well as the questions underneath. You will be able to type your answers in to each question. In order for you to be able to highlight and access different portions of the test for editing, complete editing, you will need to come to this area and click anywhere at the very beginning. I put my mouse at the word location and clicked there and then right click. Right here, I have an option to remove content control. Removing content control gives me the ability to highlight and change some different portions of the coding scenario to better fit my understanding. You will not be able to do that unless you change the setting that I just showed you right there. Okay, so let's move on. As you can see, I have highlighted several areas of my coding scenario to make sure that I abstract correctly. You should make sure that you highlight different things for abstracting as well. You always want to abstract your location. It's important to determine where the services were rendered just in case the coding has a little bit more guidelines to review than usual. Your attending physician and your surgeon. If this is a surgery, and as we can see, there is a procedure, then we need to make sure we know who the surgeon is. I've highlighted that area. Preoperative diagnosis is listed here but I usually bypass preoperative and go over to postoperative because this is usually the diagnosis that's more confirmed after a procedure or surgery. Since the preoperative and postoperative are the same, then it's okay for me to pull my actual diagnosis from the preoperative portion of the report. What I've done is I have changed the word stab room and um, I put parentheses here and use either laceration or puncture because this is what I will use as my main term when I go search this in the ICD-10 index. I also indicated where this particular wound or puncture was because as we deal with ICD-10, different portions of the body are actually listed as a code when you're dealing with such um, procedures or problems such as lacerations, punctures, injuries. Excuse me. Okay, so we're going to move down to the procedure portion. The short description is exploration of a stab wound. It tells us where the procedure was rendered, such as the right upper quadrant of the abdomen with closure of fascial defect. Now, if you have not done this already, you need to definitely download a musculoskeletal diagram from Google by Googling it or look at the diagrams in your book. The fascia is the portion of the skin that's deepest 
such as the third layer, and it's closer to the muscle. That's what the fascia is. So as you can see, it says with closure of facial defect or fascial defect. Now getting into the actual procedure, it's telling us how the patient um, was anesthetized, such as general anesthesia. They're explaining what they did to re uh, reveal the knife and where it is in the patient's clothing. None of this is pertinent to what we're going to be coding this portion right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is put a strike through through that. We do not code for general anesthesia unless we're coding for the anesthesiologist at the same time. And since we're not coding for the anesthesiologist, that's why this is not a relevant portion to review. Now we're going to look at how they actually rendered the service. We know that he did an exploration of the stab wound, but now we need to determine if there's anything in more detail that needs to be added, such as a modifier, a side of the body, um, anything such as decreased services or increased services, prolonged complications and things like that. So that's where we would gather, um, this is where we gather that information. So we extended the incision on either side of the right upper quadrant stab wound, two to three centimeters, and carry the dissection through subcutaneous tissues using electrocautery. So basically what they did is they further cut the patient, pretty much, extended the wound or incised it. They cut the patient even further to get a better view of what the actual stab wound was affecting. If it's affecting a major organ system, is it dangerous to pull out? Do they need to um, do some type of preventive service before they actually remove the knife? So that's the purpose of them exploring the wound prior to removing the knife. So they carried the incision of the stab wound two to three centimeters further. And they went through the subcutaneous tissue using electrocautery. This really does not matter because once you start reviewing your main term, well, in the index for exploration, you're going to see um, that none of these other things will matter with your code selection. So don't really get too far into that. The only reason I'm highlighting this information is because when you get into your abstracting portion of this particular test, you're gonna be asked some questions related to some information that's in the case. So what this particular type of report is doing is giving you a better idea of how to abstract and break down medical documentation. So they continue to talk about um, how they follow the knife down along its track and then could see the knife had penetrated the anterior sheath and the rectus fascia. And that's one of the abdominal muscles, just so you guys can know that. And it penetrated that a quarter inch. So that's how far it went into the further into the one of the abdominal muscles. Remember, your musculoskeletal diagram will actually give you a picture of all of these body parts and uh, where they are in the body. So you can have a clear depiction of what's happening with this patient, which is what I always recommend doing. So what they said is that they removed the knife and they could see. So they removed the knife. There's one thing. And here's like when you're doing coding, you have to kind of break every piece of information down bit by bit. They removed the knife and then they could see the tip was just within the rectus muscle. So what they're saying is that the knife did not penetrate any further because if it had, it would have been more dangerous. There was no peritoneal penetration. And then they closed the fascia with interrupted visceral and closed the skin with vertical mattress 3.0 epsilon sutures. Now, one thing about um, wound exploration, there's um, some detail with your coding and your notes that explain what's all inclusive with that service. So even though they're saying that they closed the fascia and they did kind of like a 
double layer closure. When you get into reviewing your coding for your exploration, you need to pay attention to if that service should be coded separately or if it's included. And it will tell you that if you're in the right area. Okay, so let's look at some of the questions that we will be faced with this week. Okay, so let's look at the portions of the test that you will be um, answering questions from. Part one is just abstracting. Remember, we review the case and pull different portions of the scenario to answer these questions. So this is basically reading and reviewing um, what you see and answering these questions. As you can see, they're worth one or two points apiece. So try your best to answer every question on this exam. Okay, so then the second portion, and let me open that one. Okay. Second portion, and this is my copy, my own copy, so yours will look different, is asking about the surgical procedure. So here's where we got into um, alpha index CPT. Okay, these are all related to the procedure. So all of your answers to these six questions should be related to CPT coding. Um, subterms are identified under the main term and the alpha index. So as you begin searching your coding, you should see additional subterms. Um, what codes are listed? Describe what services are included in the guidelines. So this is where I was saying, review your guidelines for the exploration procedure. Part three, diagnosis. So these 15 questions are all related to everything that you will deal with with your ICD-10 manual only. So you need not have your CPT manual open when you're answering these questions, okay? Um, such as, you're gonna be answering questions such as the documented condition to be treated. So what's happening to the patient? What's the patient problem today? And then the last portion is assigning codes. Now remember, after you have abstracted all of your pertinent information from sections one, two, and three, when you get to assigning your codes, you will have probably already answered these questions. Now it's just time to apply the codes that you've been researching to these portions of the test. And this should be pretty easy for you. So I'm gonna look back at the case and we're going to, let me make sure I open the correct file. Look back at the case just to make sure we've covered everything. And this is not really a hard case, but there will be a question related to external cause of injury. Remember, if there's something that happened to the patient um, that was caused by an external uh, item or um, another person, such as a car accident, any type of injury, then that requires your um, external cause coding. So we don't know how the patient uh, stab wound was obtained. I would just suggest that we always consider that a stab wound can be listed as an assault. So just let's just assume the patient was assaulted. That's not documented in the case, and I know that it says, uh, or we're teaching you, that if it is not documented, it did not happen. However, um, for that missing data, we're just gonna assume, and let me put that here. Let's just assume the patient was assaulted. And that's how they ended up with the stab wound because you will be asked questions about your external cause code. And I think this is it. So um, if you have any further questions, or if something doesn't make sense and you don't know how to answer one of these questions, please be sure to reach out to me before your Sunday deadline. And remember, make sure that you submit this and all of your week one assignments on time because this will give you cushion for future weeks. Thank you for watching. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.